This is a song. Uh, they warned me about this song a little bit. So we'll see how much we get into it. Probably not very far. Uh, the song is called Mariana Cross. Uh, the artist is Ghost. The album is Seven Inches of Satanic Panic. Uh, the producer suggested I listen to this because it's got like a zillion views. It's got 95 million views on audio, 50 million views on a live performance. Uh, it's not a new song, um, but it's made a comeback across the internet's most popular songs on TikTok and Instagram. A lot of people are using it. Uh, so in any case, let's see how far I make it into this before I throw something at the screen. There's a song that my papa used to sing, actually. You might like this one. Hmm. A lot of church imagery, but then a lot of kind of demonic um, costume. I don't mind the music part of it. It's kind of like just 80s, somewhat, somewhat lame. Kind of 80s. That's enough. That's enough. You can cut it off. There we go. All right. I guess that's uh, why it's considered sacrilegious and blasphemous, which it obviously is. So let me see. I'll scan the lyrics very quickly and just see if there's anything worth even talking about here. Uh, Holy Mary. I assume this would refer to Our Lady, you know, the mother, mother of God. Uh, like Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Mary on a cross. And then obviously there's this disgusting sexual lyric later, which means probably the earlier ones are somewhat sexual. After all the sorrow, riding high, repeat, repeat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I guess that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, okay. All right, not surprised. Look, it's a fallen world. We're... Uh, this is a world that is enthralled to principalities and uh, spiritual wickedness in high places. So the, the one we're really talking about, you know, silver lining and a touch of gray here. The one notable cultural development from this is the, the return of uh, blasphemy and sacrilege as having cultural cachet. Probably this is because our culture is just enthralled once again to uh, demons in a really open way that that had not been the case for uh, a lot of um, a lot of the period from the incarnation up through the present. So uh, up through the, the revolutions that toppled our civilization. So in the in the Middle Ages, the the swear words, the vulgar, profane words, tended to be. Uh, sacrilegious words. And there are all sorts of examples of it, m many of which are now uh, probably unintelligible to people. Um, but they would refer to the wounds of Christ, for instance, or they would refer to Our Lady or something. And then in recent years, the uh, we talked about this on the show about a month ago. Uh, in recent years, profanity and vulgarity has been um, more bodil bodily, I suppose, you know, just like things about like copulation and, you know, bodily fluids and all sorts of gross stuff. And the sacrilegious ones have fallen out of favor because people didn't take religion that seriously. And so now you might say, well, with the return of this kind of sacrilege, uh, 
You know, this is further evidence. We're moving even further away from Christianity. But, but in a way, it means people are taking religion more seriously. The fact that these people are dressing up like nuns, the, people, the, the fact that this whole set looks kind of like a church, you know, with stained glass and even crosses there, and the fact that they would sing these hideous, hideous things about Mary, um, which again, it's, the, from the text, it would seem to imply that we're talking about Mary, the mother of God. It could be uh, Mary Magdalene. It could be Mary, uh, it could, could be any of the other Marys in the Bible. There are m- multiple other Marys in the Old Testament. Um, but, or in the New Testament, rather. But uh, it seems textually that the phrase Holy Mary would, would probably refer to um, Mary, the mother of God. And so the fact that that is so extraordinarily sacrilegious and blasphemous makes me think that as, as the old lower gods, you know, the demons return to, to, to now explicit worship in some cases. We put up a, a Baphomet statue in, in a state capital in the United States just months ago. As that happens, there will be a re-engagement with religion. And uh, so not, not that these people, you know, are, are intending that. They're obviously just intending to, to uh, give offense to God. But God is not mocked, and uh, he does win in the end. And so in, the, in that way, people taking religion a little bit more seriously might and almost certainly will redound uh, to, to the salvation of at least some people, uh, though perhaps others are uh, being, being a little uh, reckless and foolish. The libs are on offense. One kind of silly example of them being on offense, they are trying to rename a federal prison after Donald Trump. The, this is their version of trolling. And they're not, the libs are not as, they, they sometimes have a couple winners, but they're, they're generally not as good at trolling and memes and counterculture as the right is because the libs control the establishment because the libs control all the institutions. So they're, they're not, as good anymore at subverting those things. They used to be, they subverted all of the institutions in the West, but but they've lost their touch a little bit. Now it's people on the right who are a little better. But in any case, this is probably the best trolling they've done in a while. Uh, this was just after Republicans proposed renaming Dulles Airport after Trump. Democrats countered by proposing renaming the Miami Federal Correctional Institution, which is the nearest prison to Mar-a-Lago. Uh, they they uh, suggested they rename that the, the Trump Federal Correctional Institution. Uh, this is supposed to own Trump. Tee hee hee, we got him. See, we indicted him a billion times. We're going to send him to prison for 700 years. He's going to die in an orange jumpsuit. Ha ha ha, we're going to name this after Trump. I think this probably was a, a bad move for the Democrats. Not that it will happen. It won't actually matter. But but the, the reason I think this was a, a bad move, is it underscores something that some of us have observed for a long time. Namely, the political conversation is all about Trump. It's just about Trump. Trump supporters can't stop talking about him. Trump's enemies especially can't stop talking about him. Even the people in the middle who are apolitical, who don't want to talk about any of these politicians, even they talk about Trump. It's just all kind of about Trump. If the Democrats really wanted to needle Trump, if they really wanted to effectively get him, they would get him out of the conversation, but they can't. The the man, as, as, as we should have expected, the man has been a celebrity for 40 year, over 40 years now, major tabloid star, major network television star, major real estate mogul, guy who testifies before Congress. He's, he's been a huge celeb for much longer than I've been alive. He's very good at attracting attention. And the only thing worse than being talked about is not being talked about in the minds, certainly of politicians. And so even as they try to attack him, they just, they kind of end up memeing him into positions of authority and potentially into the Oval Office, which is largely what happened in 2016. Man, that was... A great clip. Now, ring the bell, subscribe to the Michael Knowles YouTube channel, and we will see you next time.